Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to do some definite integrals with u substitution involved, giving you two different options to work your bounds when you do u substitution with definite integrals, making sure that you've seen both ways so you can decide for yourself which way you think is better for you. Here we've shown the four examples that we're going to work in this video. If you have one that you want to jump to in particular and skip right to it, that's great. Otherwise, just work alongside us and we'll get right to it. Our first integral, we have the integral of 6x times the quantity x squared minus 1, all cubed, dx, from x equals 1 to x equals 2. Now remember, these are x bounds, so when we go ahead and substitute in terms of u, we'll have to keep in mind that this was x equals 1 and x equals 2 for our bounds. If we go ahead and just figure out our u substitution, I notice I have an x term out here, and I have some x squared information, and the derivative of x squared is going to be x. So I'm going to go ahead and choose u to be everything inside of the parentheses there, x squared minus 1 because then my du, my derivative of that, is going to be 2x dx. Okay, so I get all of this in here being u, so we'll have u cubed, and then 2x dx is just off by a constant multiple. So 6x dx, if I multiply everything by 3 here, then I'll get exactly the 6x dx I need. So I'll have that 3 du is equal to 6x dx. So our 6x dx here, those two pieces together, I know are actually going to be replaced with 3 du. So we'll now actually show you two ways to work with your u bounds. One way over here is to solve for new bounds. So solve new bounds in terms of u. And the way you would solve your bounds in terms of u is to use the substitution that you had in the first place. So solving new bounds, first of all I have x equals 1 and x equals 2, right? So if x equals 1, then that tells me I would plug into my u and u would equal 1 squared minus 1, right? So u equals 1 squared minus 1 using my substitution and I would get that u is 0. And then the other bound, x equals 2, I would go ahead and plug that into my u substitution, say x equals 2 and plug that in, u would equal 2 squared minus 1, which is 3. And so then I could go ahead and set up my integral as 3 u cubed du. And because this is integral du, I can write the u bounds of 0 to 3. Okay, so that is one way to do that, actually working out the new bounds. If we go ahead and move forward solving this, we'll get, we'll keep the constant multiple of 3. The power will go up by 1 here. This is just a power rule. So we'll get u to the 4 over 4. And then we will evaluate from 0 to 3. So if we go ahead and do that, so we'll plug in 3. So then I would have 3 to the 4 over 4. That's plugging in 3 for u. Minus 0 to the 4, also over 4. That's going to be 0 though, right? So here I'll get 3 to the 4, which is 81 over 4, times 3. That'll actually give us 243 over 4. Okay, so that is one way to do it. Now we're going to show you one more way, and this is actually the way that we're going to work this in the rest of our videos here, and that is to leave the bounds in terms of x. So after this point, we wouldn't solve for new bounds, this work that we did over here to find the new u equals 0 and u equals 3. We would just simply have set up our 3 u cubed du, and we would have left our 1 and 2, but we would just make a note that this is an x bound and this is an x bound. These aren't things we plug in for u, these are just things that we plug in for x. That helps to remind us this x equals so that we don't actually, when we get done with integrating in terms of u, plug these in accidentally instead. So we would go ahead and do the same antiderivative. So we would still get 3 u to the 4 over 4. But instead of solving our new bounds, what we'll need to do is, because this is really x equals 1 to x equals 2, we'll do what we normally do with an indefinite integral, and that's just simply replace the x squared minus 1 back in for u before we put in the bounds. So we'll actually say 3 times the quantity x squared minus 1 to the 4 over 4, and we'll just evaluate from 1 to 2. 
So for this method, what you actually do is you have one extra little step where you just have to write u back in terms of x. Over here, you have the extra steps of having to solve for new bounds in terms of u. There are arguments on both sides of what to do. I'm going to go ahead and make the argument for this second method in that we don't have extra steps where we might make a mistake solving for new bounds. So I'm just going to leave my bounds in future examples in terms of x. So now if we go in and replace everything here, we would get three times. I would get two squared, which would be four minus one. So that would be three to the four over four. Same thing there, right? Minus, if I plug in one, one squared minus one would be zero. So I'd get zero to the four over four. So I get the same thing as before. Of course, this is still going to be 243 over four. But the idea here is we don't solve for new bounds. We simply just substitute back in terms of x and then use the bounds that we were given to start with. Let's look at the rest of our examples now, just leaving these bounds in terms of x here. So doing our u substitution for 3 over the square root of x plus 4 dx. Remember, these are x bounds. So if I spot something that I should replace, probably in the denominator, probably in this root here, right? And the rest of it is some multiple of its derivative. u equals x plus 4 is a good choice for that because I just have a constant here and the derivative of x plus 4 is also just some constant, right? So our du is going to be 1 dx also known as just dx, right? So you could say du is dx and replace everything here. So this is going to be du here. This stuff down here will be square root of u. Remember these are x bounds here. So when we set up our integral with the new bounds, we're gonna go ahead and say the integral with x equals zero and x equals five. This becomes three over the square root of u du. You can do this as a power rule, right? So we can think of this as the square root on the bottom. That's really the one half power and it's a negative power, right? So we really get three u to the negative one half du. Now doing this as a power, the power will go up by one, right? So we'll get three u to the positive one half. And then really dividing by the new power, divide by a half. And remember our bounds are still x bounds, 0 to 5. So let's go ahead and deal with our 1 half. So divide by 1 half is the same as multiply by 2 over 1. Let's go ahead and also replace the u, right? So I'm going to have a 6. And then also think about u to the 1 half is the square root of u. So let's replace our u. That'll be square root of this thing here. So it'll be 6 square root of x plus 4. And now our bounds, we can just write 0 and 5 because we're back in terms of x. Let's go ahead and plug that in. So we'll get 6 times the square root of 5 plus 4, which would be 9, minus the square root of 0 plus 4, which would be 4. So we will get 6 times 3 minus 2. Those are square roots we know. 6 times 1, right? So in other words, we get a value of 6 for this integral. Our third one, we have the integral of sine of 2x dx from 0 to pi over 2. These are x bounds here. Let's go ahead and do a substitution for what's inside of our sine function though. So let's say u is equal to 2x. Then what's the derivative of that? Well, it's 2, right? So du equals 2 dx. But I just have dx, right? So I go ahead and divide both sides by 2. That would give me 1 half du is equal to dx. So this is actually 1 half du here. And this part is u inside of there. So now for our 1 half du, let's go ahead and put the 1 half out front. So we'll say 1 half integral. We get sine u and we have du. Put your du on the end, right? So 1 half integral sine of u du, and don't mistake these for u bounds. This is x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. Let's go ahead and do our antiderivative though. So we'll have 1 half. What is the antiderivative of sine of u? Well, it's actually negative cosine of u. So we get negative cosine u. These bounds, again, remember are x bounds, so be careful. 0 to pi over 2 is in terms of x. Let's go ahead and replace u in terms of x, and then we can use these. We'll say negative cosine of 2x. 
And now we'll plug in r0 and r pi over 2, right? Give myself some room here, so I'll say half and start my brackets. So if I plug in pi over 2, I would get negative cosine of, if I plug in pi over 2, 2 times pi over 2 would be pi, so we get negative cosine of pi for the top bound. The lower bound here, we would have negative, just be careful with your signs there. 2 times 0 in the cosine function would still be 0. So let's go ahead and say half times what is negative cosine of pi? Well, cosine of pi is negative 1 all by itself. So negative, negative 1 would make that a positive 1. Okay, minus negative, so we'll make that a plus, let's say. And then what is cosine of 0? That's 1. So we get 1 there. So 1 plus 1 is 2, and then half times 2 would give us 1. All right, looking at our last one, we have the integral of e to the 3x dx, and our bounds are x equals 0 to x equals ln 2. If we let u equal the inside of the exponential here, u is equal 3x. That's a nice thing, because the derivative of 3x is just a constant, and I don't have anything else out here, right? du is then 3dx. So this part becomes u, so we get e to the u. And then dx, if I divide both sides by 3, I have a direct replacement for dx. That tells me 1 third du is equal to dx, right? So dx is actually 1 third du. Let's go ahead and replace that, right? So I'll put my 1 third out front. Integral. Remember these are x bounds, so we'll say x equals 0 to x equals ln of 2. We have e to the u du, right? So 1 third du is there, e to the u is there. Those are x bounds. Our antiderivative is easy though, right? So we'll keep the 1 third. The antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. And x equals 0 to x equals ln 2. So let's go back and substitute in terms of x now. So u was 3x. We'll go ahead and say 1 third e to the 3x. And now that we're in terms of x, we'll go from 0 to ln 2 for x. Let's go ahead and do that. Starting way over here, giving myself some room so I can work with these lns here. So we've got 1 third. If I plug in ln of 2 for x, that will give me e to the 3 ln 2. If I plug in 0 for x, I would just get e to the 3 times 0. That's just e to the 0. Okay, now this first one we're going to do a bit of rearranging. This last one we should probably know what that is, right? So 1 third e to the 3 ln 2. There's a number here between my exponential and my log that sort of may be getting in the way of me seeing what that really is. So let's go ahead and remember that a number in front of a log, multiplying the log, we can actually make that a power in the log. So we're going to make this e to the ln of 2 cubed minus e to the 0, we should know is 1, right? Now e to the ln of something is just that something, right? So I really get 2 cubed. We get 1 third times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8 though, right? Minus 1. So we get 1 third times 8 minus 1. That's a 7 there, so we'll call this answer 7 over 3 for this integral. Okay, everyone, hopefully this helps you with your u substitution and figuring out how to deal with your x bounds in terms of u substitutions. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.